Hey there everyone, Robert here, and today I want to showcase how to go about with some scroll tutorials and just maybe take a website that looks like this and add some flair with some tutorials to make these very static elements move, have some scrolly telling kind of effects going on. And just add a lot of impact to the site so yeah join me as i go through very briefly just going about how to do this in wix studio showcase some tips and tricks and yeah just showcase how you can go about and create these awesome effects so with that let's go ahead and take a look all right so back here and again i'm here in the editor within wix studio and I guess just to kind of get started with the idea. So Wix Studio does allow for no code animations. I've done a few videos before, like already on the topic and we I've done one for like mouse effects and looping animations uh, a while back, like ages ago for hover click. And I think I've done gen like just broadly on all of the animations that you can possibly do. I did want to kind of just highlight the scroll effects um, I was just kind of going through the Wix Studio Academy and they actually have a lot here for animations and interactions. So interestingly, again, you can see they have these here. So what I wanted to do rather than create my own media and my own assets, I want to do these where there's kind of these transcripts, maybe a deeper dive into it, all of them collected into one place. But I did basically get all of these and just put them on one website. So I'm just going to go ahead and dive in on maybe some little things, explain some things, just also some tips and tricks as well when you're creating all of these and maybe just putting them all together. So again, well, like this kind of horizontal scrolling effect, I actually have a whole video on that as well. Uh, the this planet spinning one is really cool. This one was actually being used on the Wix Studio homepage previously, being able to change tags this kind of blurring effect that happens as you're scrolling downwards a little bit. This one here where your images are just kind of changing shape as you're scrolling down to see everything in regards to the creative media that you've done. And yeah, so just going to get started. So here I have basically this is my recreation of the Wix Studio homepage the previous version of it where we have the text gray and then as we scroll down this slowly fills out. To kind of start off just with the animations and kind of how they work. So most all elements do have the ability to be animated. If you don't see that they have it, then it's possible maybe they don't have that effect necessarily. But let's say, I think now thankfully even containers can also be animated. So they do allow like hover and scroll and click animations. And I guess just to kind of go in through with the scroll. So the way that we would do this is once we add it on here in the add panel, we have the animations and effects that are up here represented by this like little lightning bolt icon. And when we do the scroll, we can choose to add an animation. The basic premise for this is we decide what it is that we want to animate. So we can decide to animate the element itself, or we can decide to animate something else. We'll actually be using this on a different animation that's a little bit further down. So I'll get into that a little bit deeper there, but just to kind of showcase, and then we can choose the animation path. We can do if it's to its design or from its design. And if this is maybe a little unclear, so if we do it to its design, I'll choose move for right now, and I'm going to adjust the animation. So let's say I want this to move like 800 pixels, uh, like the whole way through. So, and again, I'll, I'll get into this, but again, we can choose the angle where this is moving in. And we can control the distance. You can choose things like pixel, viewport height, viewport width, or a percentage of its parent container. I'll leave it as pixels. And then we can control the animation area. I'll get into this in a second. We can see what happens is as I'm scrolling, we have the boundary box for the element itself. And if I choose to its bounding or like to its section, I didn't say it, but see to its design oh, there you go of the section so let's preview this or again i'll just edit this again adjust the animation 
So we can see... Oh, okay, because I keep choosing the scroll. I want to use my mouse then to move. But, let's see. So we can see again, as I'm scrolling, we can see it ends up... Its final destination basically ends up being where I have it. Now, if I do from its design, where I have it right now, it's going to start moving based off of this. So maybe if I wanted to move down here by 800 pixels at the very start, once it's already in the viewport, and I keep moving, it's scrolling. So it's it starts here and it's moving away from there. Again, in this case, it starts somewhere else and then it ends up here ultimately. So that's very important if maybe depending on the design, maybe you want things to meet. Again, we'll kind of get into that in one of the other sections, but just kind of wanted to highlight that. And I will go into like the actual animation area and what that means uh, right here. So here what we have for this text, we actually have two different versions of this text. I have one here in gray and then I have one here in white. So the gray one, we're keeping it as is. I do have a layered behind because the white one is ultimately where we're going to see. And here this scroll animation is we're revealing it and we're revealing itself. And here's what we do. Again, very small layer that we have here from 50 to kind of like 50-ish or so, like 46 to like 50. It's not, it's a very quick animation. I didn't want it to take too long, but just enough that you can kind of see like it changed colors. Again, if you're scrolling really fast, you would just probably see like, oh, it just immediately looks like it changes. But that kind of does go into what I want to highlight here. And that's what this animation area is. So what this animation area is, is basically the area where this is visible on the viewport screen or on the actual screen itself. So you can see right now, this red tick, what that indicates, it's where this is right now. And let's say I'm gonna grab both of these and move it further down. Now let me grab this one again and change the animation. And we can see the red tick has come down quite a bit because right now it's roughly, I guess like roughly 15% up from the bottom of the viewport. So zero would be the very bottom and 100 would be the very, very top of the viewport. So basically if I do this, I'm telling this, hey, from the, the second this enters the viewport until it leaves the viewport, that's how long the animation takes to complete. So you can actually click on here too. So let's say again, I do want it to be at 15. So basically this will be starting once where it is right now, where I can visibly see it right now at the second. And again, if I'm scrolled down, that could give you a good idea as to where you want it to be. So from 15% of the viewport all the way to 100%, that's how long it's gonna take this white to reveal itself. And again, I can see it's a lot slower. And that's a good way if you want to control maybe like how long something takes to do. So again, I hope that kind of makes sense a little bit. And again, you could do the click on both ends. So if maybe I want it to be done by the time maybe they're most up of the way of the screen, I can do that preview. And again, once it's around here, it's already been revealed. Again, it's about like a quarter way up of this viewport. So that's pretty cool. Again, this one here actually is based off of this effect here. It seems like it's one of the earlier ones that they did. I'm assuming they have this from old to new. But this blur effect, what's really interesting about this, it kind of highlights two principles that you can do. And that's that you can have different effects for both of these. And this one actually does take really good advantage of from its design. And let me do to its design. So here what's happening is it basically starts off blurry and it ends like un like not blurry, um, unblurred. And we have it going from 40 to 60. So it starts off kind of like normal and then it's from 40% of the screen port width and to 60% of the viewport height, then it's not transparent. Like basically it's not blurred anymore. But we actually have a very cool thing going on within the container. So this text is actually in a container. 
which is inside of a stack. I'll get into that in a second. But what I have here then is this blur is to its design. So I have it from 60% to 100% of this viewport width. So in practice, what this ends up looking like is the container basically is like not blurry and the text is blurry. And then once it's from 40 to 60% of the screen, like of the screen height, it's unblurred and then it stops like after the 60% because now the container is getting blurry. So again, we can see here's what's going on. And again, kind of an interesting way to take this into account. What's nice is for something like this, where I have a lot of them and they actually do mention this in the video is let's say I wanted to add another element. If I duplicate this, you can see the effects actually still take in place. So again, this one, this container has that same blur and the text inside already has that blur. So let me just change this up to like buy now. And I would hyperlink this, but don't want to spend that time. But again, we can see already. Cool. I don't have to add new like code or I don't have to redo this by duplicating it. It's retaining it from the original version of this. So that's actually pretty cool. Now with this one, I actually do just want to highlight. I think they kind of did the same thing here too. Well, actually these are different images. This one actually has a sandbox. So what's interesting with the sandbox, if you see any of these that are listed as such, and you can filter it, I think over here too. So the sandboxes are kind of cool because they actually give you the editor already complete, already set up. And basically the elements are there. They give you the step by step. So if you see any of these from all topics, the sandboxes basically are, Hey, here's how you can work with dynamic content. In this example, basically they give you the images and they tell you, cool, like stack these items. So like the image come up here, change it to, you know, like set the scroll animation from its design, choose shape, adjust the shape, adjust the intensity, adjust the animation and you can choose the shape. Again, pretty cool here too. Again, if let's say I want to do like a square or a diamond or an oval, uh, it's not going to overwrite these necessarily. I can choose the animation area still. Now, in regards to something for like intensity, this is basically like how strong this kind of works. So again, with like an intensity of zero, like really doesn't like go too much. Uh, and then if I crank this all the way up, Basically, by the time it gets down here, it gets like super, super small. And it's uh, like basically a dot, like at this point. So that's kind of how that works. And again, you can do this with a few different shapes. A diamond, and I'll just leave it at that. And that's kind of cool. Uh, the horizontal uh, space one, this is kind of interesting because it does go into like a few things and this is one where this container is actually animating the horizontal scroll so here we have this and it's even labeled as such here um, again they give you the assets there so this one actually is the trigger so what's happening is what this is doing is this purple container here lavender maybe I don't know uh, but this container is actually moving this container up here so again, if we didn't have this, what would end up happening is this would start moving right away. So we're doing this because we want this to be visible and legible for like a little bit. And since this is sticky, this is staying on the viewport. So this is staying as you scroll down and you get to the end of the section. But then we're using this container that's behind it to start moving it once we get to a point in the viewport where we're okay, well now we want the animation to start. So again, I'll adjust the animation here. And again, we're moving it to the left. We're moving it a hundred viewport width. So we're moving it a hundred percent of the screen and we're doing it the second this enters the screen until it leaves the screen. So by that time, the animation's already done. And again, this one, they kind of go into it, but what we just have with the container is a custom size. 
it's said to be about like 200 viewport like width so it's twice as wide as the screen and about as tall as the screen is and then the content here so let me move this actually just so we can kind of see how this looks this container so again there's extra content here we're making this container as big as the screen and actually double the size of the screen but again um i'll share this tutorial because i did something similar like this before using like a repeater that's pretty cool and then this rocket ship itself has an animation so again, you have just enough time to kind of see what this is. By the time you start scrolling down, you realize, oh, okay, cool. The screen's moving and it's getting somewhere else. And I do like the idea of having something moving from one end to the other. And so now this one here is maybe the more complex one, but really it's actually not too bad once you see what they're doing. And the steps that they take are very quick to kind of replicate. Let me preview it so we can kind of see what's happening here. And again, that's this one, you see, just all formats. That's this one here with the planet. Again, this one actually does give you these elements. But what they've done here is they have this image. And this image then is grouped up with this other image. And they're in a stack. And then they're duplicated. And very similarly to what we did up here, you can kind of see it. But these then are behind in the Z index, these planet ones. So these more like actual filled out images, those are actually in front of it in terms of the layer. So these are just kind of fading in and they're actually just duplicates. So what we have is these move and then their stack. Let me see if I can kind of show it on here. The stack that they're in is spinning and then this whole container is fading in so i actually did something very similar here if you kind of want to get the idea and again i think this is why it's really cool being able to just kind of maybe plan things out so what i have here is i have this whole entire like i have this button and this button is fading in, like kind of doing a shape i thought i had it to fade but that's fine. And then this parent stack is expanding. So it's getting bigger as I'm scrolling down. And I have this container flipping. So all of these effects kind of happen as I'm scrolling through the site. So again, it's pretty cool. Uh, then I can kind of be able to do multiple things at the same time. So again, it's right now backwards and then it's flipping. And then the entire stack is getting bigger. And once I get here, the button kind of then shows up and it appeared. So very cool being able to combine all of these because the element itself has an animation, then its parent has an animation, and then its other parent has an animation. So again, pretty cool. And again, I think what they're doing here too, just to showcase this black kind of disappearing as you're scrolling, uh, very simply, it's actually just a shape, just a square. Uh, here what I did is I set it to 100% of the viewport width or the width and the height of the section. I found that a lot easier. I think in their video they're dragging it. Um, <laughs> I just find this a lot easier. I'm just like, I'll just use the size. But yeah, the, again, very cool just to be able to do that. Again, taking advantage also of duplicating it because they're following the exact same motion. So this stack and this stack are just duplicates of each other. That same motion is carrying over here. But with that, yeah, again, I definitely highly recommend check out the Academy, check these videos out, recreate these if you can. Again, if you want to see my horizontal video, I'll share that link down below. But yeah, hopefully this is kind of useful. Hopefully some tips as well, knowing maybe what some of these elements back here do, what you can kind of be able to accomplish with them. And yeah, thanks everyone. Appreciate it. Bye for now.